to be a relevant leader, keep learning every day, keep producing more fruits, because that's what people really want from you. The day your fruit run dry, like me, I'm a pastor. I pray for people who are sick, they get healed. The day I pray and nobody gets healed, they will say, Muruti and Ahtari Nama. But we go very Do you understand? Like you, you are a representative of the, of the students. They like it when you are colliding with the institution. You understand? When you go there and you say, No, I go. Rila P. Rebaka Uja. Rebaka Uja. Rebaka Uja. Rebaka Uja. You understand? <laughs> it is populism. That's how it works. I know it. <laughs> I've been in web politics. I've been in. Hey, uh, when the part of MDC, you said you like Chavisa, what did you? When Chavisa's party was formed, I was there, the original MDC. I was the original rep in what we call Mashiko province, one of the biggest provinces in Zimbabwe. And yeah. I was working as a banker there. That's my background. And uh, we were busy doing toy toy. <laughs> Those were the years. Uh, you, you, you know, it was nice because we were seeing that Tangrai can take us up, man. You understand? But when we were shepherd him, and shepherd him, and shepherd him, we said, ah, that they are. Yeah, I'm going to love you. And we, 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 we let go, you understand? So as a leader, learn this. People love what you have. It's an animal, how we chair. How on You know what he really wants? <laughs> 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 you really want what you can offer. It's the truth. So also have your eye of the mind thinking, saying, what does this guy do? This is why I teach young girls that if you want a man to marry you first, lock the back door. Because if you give him in economics, when I was doing uh, my preliminary degrees, one of the modules I learned was economics, there was what you call the law of diminishing marginal utility. You understand? And what it said is that the more you have a commodity, the less value it produces for you. Utility in economics is defined as the capacity to satisfy a want, right? If I am very, very hungry and you give me a plate of pie, I will eat it like a madman, right? And if you give me a second plate, I can eat it. But if you give me a third flat, I may just take a few pinches here and there and say, This is the secret to you, young ladies. Men are creatures of intrigue. They want to know what is hidden, what is the mystery hidden inside of you. You understand? And now the secret is that if you want them to act very fast, shut the back door like this. <laughs> I'm giving you tips. If you want to be very fast, do that to baby boys. Shut the back door. And you know what they will do? They will become more curious to say, what is he hiding? <laughs> you understand? And they will look for man and put a stop nonsense in your finger. <coughs> and say, I really doesn't matter what you are hearing. Once they have yelled at you, you are in your head. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You see, we've got a problem with young people. You know, we've got my girl asking her like a million. You say, you say what? When you see a boy and you like him, you actually act up, girls. Isn't that right? And you know, you begin to buy him lunch, you begin to buy him supper, you begin to buy him outfits, and you are saying, this is who I am, right? And when you get married, you get into the home, this is what you then do. You say to him, buy some. By being clothes. And he shepherds you because the, the blueprint you gave him says that you're the one who buys. So everybody shouted here. 
That was the marriage counseling from the marriage master mentor, right? It's for free, that's all. <laughs> all right. So, so you've got to understand life, you young people, because you've got to know what value you have. If you've got something valuable, lock it up. You understand? It doesn't matter somebody left you yesterday, right? If you meet a new guy, you are the world to him. So what do you do? What do you do? Don't pass it on until this thing is here. Until the poverty matters. Then say, what is marriage? Marriage is an institution where a man loses his bachelor's degree and a woman acquires a master's degree. <laughs> Ah, you don't know. <laughs> Captain Thomas Sankara <laughs> from Burkina Faso, he was killed by his best friend, uh, Colonel Pio Bless Kampaore. That's where the diversion came from. All right. So I'm saying that in leadership, uh, put your friends here, but put your enemies much near. You understand? This is how. Uh, our Prime Minister Winston Churchill governed England during the days of the war, right? He actually brought people who criticized him a lot. And they gave him more value. Do you know that your enemy knows you more than you know yourself? Don't, as leaders, don't throw away people who criticize you. Be worried about people who uh, see new praises throughout. But think about those people who criticize you. Your enemy knows your weaknesses. Do you know that? And they will say you, you walk like this, you talk like this, and when they speak and you hear it, don't get mad. They are giving you a free lecture on personal development in life. Go and say, okay, how do I correct this? How do I correct that? And as you are doing that, guess what? You are getting better with each passing day. Somebody shout, I hear you. Next question. Whose face is that? I did that deliberately to put that face there. <laughs> I know because you see, you are too used to that leaders are politicians. But this man is a leader, an amazing leader. He was born in the Republic of Zimbabwe. And he is called Dr. Stripe Masiwa. Dr. Stripe Masiwa is the owner and the founder of Econet Telecom Lesotho. He is the owner and the founder of Mascom in Botswana. He is the founder of Econet Wireless in Nigeria, Econet Wireless in Mauritius, Econet Wireless in Kenya, and so on and so forth. He is the richest man in Zimbabwe, and he is blessed. He sits on a net worth currently of 2.3 billion American dollars, by my estimation. Stripe Masiwa. He is the owner of the Higher Life Foundation, which is here in Lesotho. Not only is it in Lesotho, it is all over Africa. And what does it do? It takes Lesotho students and it takes them to the biggest universities in the world. Oxford, Harvard, you know, at his own cost. He is an outstanding philanthropist and he is, I think, one of the presidents or co chairs of the uh, Rockefeller Foundation. Now you know. So he is a leader in the business world. Do you see that? When Zimbabwe was hit by Corona, I don't know how many millions he pumped. And when it was hit by uh, cholera, he pumped it other millions a day. When things are bad in Zimbabwe, the government knocks on his door and says, try to help us, and he helps the nation for free. Do you understand? That's why we hope he can play Vatican and say, I want to become president. <laughs> do, do, do you understand? This man is a leader. But to most people, they will just say he's a businessman. But he is a leader. Remember I said leadership is solving what? Problems. Leadership is responding with your abilities, which is what we call leadership is responsibility. So this man qualifies to be a what? A leader. 
let me show you the other leader as I get ready to go to the next level. Kimba. <laughs> Do you know Virgin Mobile? Yes. You guys, you should read. You see, I'm old enough to be your father's most of you. I read two books every week. Two books every week. But you, how many are you reading? I'm not talking about school books. I am a doctor already. I'm doing two PhDs as I'm standing before you right now. One is in finance and one is in divinity. So don't tell me that you are students, you are busy, you can't be busier than I am. You understand? So you ought to take time to read. Leaders are readers. You lead on the basis of information. Because information is what will bring inspiration. And inspiration is what will get you transformation. Is the way it is. You see, he who wants to lead others must have more information. Because life is built on information. <clears throat> when you hear in the Bible says you have the light of the world, it is talking about knowledge. It is talking about information, which when you process, it becomes wisdom. When you process the wisdom, it becomes understanding. When you apply that understanding, you become successful. That's how it works. So you guys, you need to read. How can you tell me you don't know this man? Sir Richard Branson, the owner of Virgin Mobiles, one of the transformational leaders the world has ever known. When you are at work in his company and you feel tired and you want to sleep, you just tell the other guy that I'm sleeping. And you sleep at work. It's okay. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> You sleep. Yes, you sleep well. You sleep. You sleep nicely. You just sleep. They are even bad. When you sleep. Because he says, if you are tired, I will read. And then was calling. And so he said, Hello, and hello. hello. Vision, vision, mobile. Hello, hello. Vision, mobile. Yeah, yeah, but see, you that job. When somebody was saying, Vigil, I can't go with you, Vigil, in a man. Can you hear the moon? You can go to leave. Come on, come on, come on. You, you understand? Uh, so he's one of the biggest men in Britain. He was knighted, and he's called Sir Richard Branson. What I like about him is uh, his intensity and level of focus. There is uh, a man who is called Martin Hardy. How many of you are familiar with the Success Magazine? Raise your hand if you know the Success Magazine. All right, don't worry, that's why I'm here to do, to give you information, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Right. That's why I'm here, right? Yeah. So, Martin Hardy runs the most powerful success magazine in the world. And this magazine, how it becomes big, he brings the big people to talk their stories of leadership, right? And one day he wrote to, to Sir Richard Branson and he said, Sir, I want you to come and speak at my uh, magazine uh, pitch. And you are going to be paid for one hour which you spent. We are going to pay you 250,000 American dollars was speaking for an hour. By the way, the official rate for the big guys like John Maxwell, he speaks for $50,000 a day. Do you hear that? Like if we want to say, as we want to bring John Maxwell here, we should put together $50,000. That's a lot of money, you know that? $50,000 is a lot of money. That's what John Maxwell speaks for a day. Do you understand? But this guy, Martin Hardy, changed every rule in the book. And he said, Richard Branson, come and speak for one hour. I pay you 250,000. Les Brown speaks for about 30,000, you know, dollars per day. So these are the biggest guys in the industry, you understand? 
they make serious money. Yeah, Tony Robbins is the head of that. I don't even know how much he charges. But he is a multi-millionaire seated on around 700 million, close to a billion, right? So Marty Hardy wrote to Sir Richard Branson and said, come and speak for how many minutes? 60. Mm -hmm. Say I'll give you how much? <laughs> the letter went, and when the letter went, guess what? Richard Branson saw it, flipped it the other side, and ignored it. Marty Hardy, if you knew who I'm talking about, he is a very egocentrical guy. So his ego shot up to say, how can this billionaire guy ignore me? Does he think I don't have money to pay for him? Remember, I said the rent is 50,000, right? And he doubled it. And he wrote another letter. And he said, I am kindly inviting you to speak at my magazine for 500,000 American dollars. Again, Richard Branson saw the letter, put it aside. And then the ego in Marty Hardy blew, and he said, I'm doubling it. And he wrote another letter and said, Sir Richard, I'm inviting you to speak for me at my function for one million American dollars. That's 15 million miles by the way. For one hour. And so Richard Branson smiled and he told his assistants, please answer him. Then they said, Dear Mr. Marty Hardy, we are grateful for the uh, passion and commitment you continuously exhibit towards our principal, Sir Richard Branson that you want him to come and speak at your event. But here is the thing. The life of uh, Sir Richard Branson is governed by principles and programs. And in this year, we are focusing on three key pillars. And they mentioned pillar number one, pillar number two, pillar number three. And this is what we will do all year long. Any invitation and any function which we are invited must fit into these three pillars. So if we cannot have that, we are unable to honor the invitation. This is why we've not been responding to you. We are focusing on these three key areas. So thank you once more for the offer, but the answer is no. This guy, they want him for one hour. <laughs> Do you understand? If it was you, suit YSU, and you were offered the 250000 one, you were even going to leave university. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to leave it, right? And, <laughs> but this guy said no to one million. And that's why I love him as a transformational leader. Transformational leaders, they stand for something which is specific. That's the message, gentlemen. Understand? They say we want to do this thing, and this is what we are going to do. All right. Can we stand up? Can we go for a 10 minute break? And the old type of a bullet stand up for one. <laughs> You know, those ones are very rare to find these days. <laughs> like Oma Supermajara in their heads. <laughs> like Oshaka <laughs> And Of course, we see a little bit of uh, swag in Bokan uh, Left in Kuela, you know. <laughs> but uh, we are a different breed. Trust me, my friend. Right. Social media tech. I know. Right, what did I not do right here? <laughs> All right. So, uh, without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are done, right? Yes. You see, can I hear five volunteers up front here? 
if you, yes sir, yes, I want five, 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 five leaders, please be in a hurry. Can we ask you to follow up from my, follow up into some of my, ah, come, I feel like I'm going. Right. All right. We. I said five, five. Five. Five leaders. I want five leaders. Right, right. I want five leaders. Okay, you yeah, should have come. Come, it's okay. You can come. You can come number six. Yeah. Right. You you can come number six. I just want you to 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 hear these my good friends reading the names of their leaders, and I'm going to build a case. All right. I'm going to build a case. So. Chief, you're going to start moving from right to left. You see, I'm unorthodox. You see? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I change every rule in the book, you know. <laughs> okay. I have Professor Muzazi. Uh -huh. He was a rector at MTTC. All right. I have Mahatma Gandhi uh -huh. from India. Uh -huh. Morena Mushweshwe, uh -huh. Lesotho, uh -huh. Nelson Mandela, uh -huh. South Africa, uh -huh. Misty Zanyan, uh -huh. NUA. All right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's you. Kim. Wow, that's an honor, eh? Ah, you have earned the big man's respect. Mm. My sister. Okay. The first one is my mother because she's a single woman who mm -hmm. raised me and me who had come today. Mm -hmm. My grandmother who was a chief uh -huh. and that is very inspirational to me because she broke patriarchal barriers in the society. I like that. I have Ukhuruman Tsebo Walastumwana Ananisa Pumila Bek Ganamuta Musha And then I have Simone De Bingo who was a feminist. <laughs> I have Michelle Obama. I liked how she supported her husband and helped him wow. be where he is. This feminist thing is in you, my dear. <laughs> you and me, we should have a talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. All right, my leader. I have Solomon Mashangu, radical political. Oh, Solomon Mashangu, PAC. Yeah. <laughs> I have Steve Nico. And you. Definitely. <laughs> I have uh, Dr. Mugwai, Thomas Kamal. Uh-huh. Lipopo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Robert Mugabe. Yes. I have... Angubo. <laughs> uh, I have Chamisa. Oh, Nelson. Nelson Chamisa. Hey, that one is the tsunami that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. I have uh, Julius Malema. Wow. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, we do to Oh, Jesus. You don't believe my friend. <laughs> Tell him you went to talk. Doctor Oh, Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Wow, this young man. Are you following them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the man who the Gulf War. Yes. Uh, okay. I have Vladimir Putin. I have Benjamin Franklin and also Mohammed so these people have mentioned most of my favorite. Mention yours, your five. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, first of all, I'll go for Bakari Tamasi uh -huh. Then I'll go for Sana Marine. She's the first prime minister of England, female. And I'll go for Malema, yes. <laughs> then um, I think the fourth one will be Nelson Mandela. And the last one. I don't know if it's 
just as big as the big one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. That's really interesting. Zoe. Zoe. Can you please come? So, you, you have yet the leaders, haven't you? Characteristics of a leader is courage. I said, can leaders come to the front? And they can. You mm. understand? Mm. A leader does not wait to be invited. Mm. And a leader does not wait to be given permission. If you think you are a leader, then you must lead. You understand? And don't apologize for being a leader. But I have something against you. all these leaders except you have. Uh, and to an extent, I still have something against her mm -hmm. as a leader. Here is my story, ladies and gentlemen. When we talk about a leader, the familiar paradigm or mindset is to think of a person in an influential position. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. um, from my school of leadership, the Coach Tech School of Leadership, you are the first leader I expected you to nominate. Is that understandable? Yeah. Because you see, you are a leader. You are not becoming a leader. You are a leader. Did you hear that? You are what? <coughs> you are a leader. You, you, you see, because what you tell yourself that you are, that's what you portray to other people. Is that clear? So you must believe that the first leader you know is you. Are we clear on that? I just want to make this very, very clear. I'll repeat this. You are the first leader whom you know. Are we clear? Because you've spent 24 seven hours with you. Isn't that right? And you know your fears, you know your aspirations. Leaders are not perfect people. Did you hear that? Leaders are not perfect what? People. Leaders are people, but they have made up their mind to lead. That's what set them apart. <coughs> what sets a leader apart is a mindset. And I just want to dispel the notion uh, that uh, leadership is a position. It is not. A position is the first level of leadership. Actually, it's the lowest level of leadership. Somebody said it yesterday, I'm going to make it better today. Somebody said that leadership is not a position. I agree with that. And they went on to say leadership is influence. Isn't that right? These are the words originally coined by Warren Bennis. Then he, they were modified by John Maxwell. All right. By the grace of God, I happen to have been coached by John Maxwell <coughs> at some stage of my life. So I am from them. Yes, some of the leadership gurus you think are big boys, they have been my personal mentors. And so I love leadership. I breathe leadership. You cut my blood, he's saying leadership. All right. <laughs> so I want you to understand that there are so many players in the leadership fraternity, you know, uh, like uh, the Mojo guy. What got you here will not take you there, you know. How to lose your Mojo and how to get it back. You understand? So I want you to understand this very important truth. You are a leader. Raise your right hand and say, I'm a leader. I am a leader. All of you, raise your right hand and say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. And leaders get the job done. And leaders get the job done. 
you said message. The most important thing about a leader is that a leader is there to solve problems. Did you hear that? So when there are problems, um, President, remind me your name again. Yes, uh, President Dumo, right? When there are problems from the students, you should say, wow, it's a good day in the office because they are making you do what you are born to do. You are born to lead. So if there are no problems, what are you solving? Nothing. Isn't that right? So the number one role of leaders, I want you never to forget this, is to solve problems. Leaders solve problems. And leaders should never be part of a problem. When I come and things were not working, I say, thank God I came. Now things are going to work. Because I am a leader. And as a leader, I solve problems. That is you. That's what leaders do. That's what leaders do. They solve problems. So they feed on problems. You see, problems are the breakfast of champions. When there are problems, it's time for me to shine. You understand? Don't take away problems because you make me irrelevant. Like the VC rightly said, we are a university because we have students. And if you are the VC, every person here is your problem. Do you understand that? Because you see, when you're a leader, if you are leading one person, it means you have one problem. If you are leading 10 people, it means you have 10 problems. Is that understood? So a leader has to solve problems. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give them a big hand. It's about two minutes, if not less than that. I just want to reinforce and buttress my point, right? Uh, I want you to see something about leadership. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You see? Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> I rest my case. Yes. <laughs> you see, that's what we call leadership. I just want you to uh, understand something about leadership. Uh, according to John C. Maxwell, uh, there are five levels of leadership. Five levels of leadership. I want us to go through them like lightning right now. I want you to draw a triangle and compartmentalize it into five segments so that we move as fast as possible. I said I'm pregnant, I need to give back. I need to download some serious information here so that when you see me next time around, you will say meta to me. So can you do that? Mamma mia, ma tu, Sanda Maria. Molte grazie, mia bella. Prata di na. Right. I'm so excited. You guys, you don't know. Uh, 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 I've been hungry, <coughs> waiting for this day to come. <coughs> waiting for this day to come. Have you done the five segments? Okay. Uh, at the bottom, I want you to level position. I want you to level position. The final segment at the basement, right? I want you to level it what? Position. At the next level, I want you to level it permission. I want you to level it permission. Number three, which is the middle segment, I want you to level it production, 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 right? These are the five levels of leadership, ladies and gentlemen. 
at table number four, I want you to level it. Reproduction. Reproduction. I said leaders are not like followers. Leaders are multipliers. If I educate you guys as leaders, you've got many followers. You understand? Go and share this stuff. Go and teach this stuff to the next guy. Is that understandable? When you teach followers, followers add. But when you teach leaders, leaders multiply. Is that understandable? That's why you see, when you want to deal with institutional unrest, you target a leader, not the follower. Once you cut the leader, there is nothing that will happen. You see, without leadership, nothing ever happens. That's why John Maxwell says, all things rise and fall with leadership. As a business consultant, if I am hired to come and bring a difference to an organization and the business is about to close, the first thing that I will recommend is that fire the CEO because things rise and fall with leadership. Isn't that true? If the CEO is good, why is the organization down? Do you understand? <laughs> true that. You, you know, sometimes we want to throw pity parties for each other, but you see, life has to be based on meritocracy, Thank right? You. If you've got the stuff, get it done. If you don't have it, let somebody kick your butt and you're out of place. It's the way it is. All right. All right, sorry for that little bit of French. All right. <laughs> All right. But it wasn't so deep, right? All right. So, so I said there are five levels of leadership. I said number one, it is called position. I said number two, it is called permission. I said number three, it is called production. I said number four, it is called reproduction. I know it as young people, this is your favorite area, reproduction. Reproduction. Have you ever seen how young people at the age of 12, when you introduce them to sex, they don't know what to do? It's mind blowing. <laughs> right. On the top is what we call the pinnacle. Is the pinnacle, right? So you see, everything about these levels of leadership is P, 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 except for number four, which is reproduction. Did you hear that? So let me just uh, in three minutes explain how this thing works, right? Hey, I've got so much to download. You, you see, remember you are a leader and you are not apologizing for being a leader. Is that understandable? When people say, uh, oh, congratulations, you are a leader, don't say, oh, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. Oh, thank you, my brother. Uh, I have to assure you, I am doing the best that I know how. You understand? Don't look down upon your office. Is that understandable? Mm -hmm. And don't apologize for who you are. Are you here or have you gone home? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so level one is a position. It is a position. A position you operate it on the basis of the locus standi, which is basically your status quo. Isn't that right? You have people come to your office because you have the position that says you must sign documents. People come to your office not because they recognize you as their leader, but because the institution recognizes you as a leader. Is that clear? Okay. So it's the very lowest level, and certainly this is where a lot of people die. Mm -hmm. They die at leadership position, which is level one, right? Mm, we've got a lot of territorial leaders. In fact, I have seen in Africa, we've got so many uh, e practitioners of leadership witchcraft. You know what's a leadership witch or wizard? He is a leader who doesn't develop others. They build systems around themselves. When they do not come to work, everything else goes to a standstill. Look at your neighbor and say, stop being a witch. Pass it on. Yes, you must pass it on. You understand? You, you must what? Pass it on. That's what you must do. 
Okay. So uh, I said there are five levels. Number one is position, which is by appointment, which is by legal authority or statute, right? Uh, you see, we greet the vice chancellor not because he is our leader initially. Initially, we greet him because his position demands that he must be respected. Is that understandable? Yeah. And so, what has to happen is that as a leader, you must always aspire to go to the next level. That's why I have got a radio series called Next Level is a Reality. You understand? And I also have got a newspaper column called Next Level is a Reality. Because in my world, nothing is static. Something is always happening. Everything is always moving. You see, because if something is not moving, it's like stinking water. Stinking water, when it is static, it sucks. You don't want to be like stinking water. If you are not growing, you are dying. And if you are dying, you are stinking. Leaders are readers. Leaders, they grow every day. Every day is a learning day. So I want to take you to number two. Number two, I say it is leadership permission. Leadership permission is what a lot of people call influence, right? And let me define influence for you in very simple English. Influence is the ability to make people do the right thing. Isn't that simple? That's influence. If she wants to quit school, and I sit here down, I say, baby girl, I see you as the first lady prime minister of Lesotho. I see potential in you. I see books that have yet to be written. I see organizations that have to be started. Please don't quit because school is your ticket to greatness. I am influenced here. She doesn't quit. And she then begins to pursue the blueprint I have shared with you. That's permission, what we have created, right? Because now, tomorrow when I come to you and I want to correct here, something that she has done wrongly. And I say, baby girl, what's your name again? Rita Bile. Rita Bile. Baby girl, Rita Bile, you know, I think you're missing it this time. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Rita Bile will listen to me because I have invested in her. Do you understand? When you are a leader, you must build influence deliberately and intentionally. That's what happens at level two. You influence people positively. You look at people and you know sometimes they're having a bad day. You know some people are married to wives which are not wives who are knives. You understand? <laughs> and when they are sleeping, instead of having a good night's sleep, they are getting the elbow. So what? So what? <laughs> 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 and you know, when they come to college or when they come to work, they are saying, thank God I have left that wish at home. <laughs> and you know, what they need is a good word. You understand? A kind word is a healing word. Do you know that? Yeah. Kindness is a healing therapy in an amazing manner. And say, oh, you are looking gorgeous, my brother. You're looking great. And suddenly you begin to pick yourself up. You understand? What am I doing? I am inspiring you. As I'm inspiring you, I'm influencing you. Is that clear? Yes. And when I have influenced you, tomorrow I can come with a little nudge. You will hear me because I have said something right about you before. The problem we have, the challenge we have with you leaders, is that you do not invest in people. You understand? And then you expect them to do right things. That's why, Madam Director, I salute you that you have brought these leaders here and I'm teaching them leadership. Now, after I've taught leadership like this, you have the right to demand for them to be better leaders because they've been equipped. You understand? You see, you cannot give what you do not have. Definitely. Doesn't matter how much I like you, if you meet me in the street and say give me 10K, if I don't have it, I will not give it to you. You understand? So now you equip people and you make them ready to lead better. You understand? So second level, it is leadership permission. And when I have influenced you in good things, you begin to trust me for more things. Isn't that right? Then we move to the next level of a leader or leadership, which is called production 
production is whereby you begin to become a trailblazer or a bulldozer. As a leader, you begin to come up with new concepts and everybody in the SRC begins to say, wow, if you want communication sorted, go to Minister so and so and they know the thing gets done. You, you begin to be so as outstanding and excellent in what you do so that people see that where they have placed you, which is what we call your niche, you are super productive. You understand? It's the third level of leadership. But the key breaker of leadership is level two, influence. Because with influence, I can go anywhere. Do you see that? I can soar, I can fly, I can run, I can jump. Number four is leadership reproduction. This is where you begin to take people under your wings and you begin to replicate your model. You understand? This is how we lead. You see, this is how we do it. We do it like this, we do it like that, and you say to people, do it also. Is that understandable? So that's why people respect mentors to the point that they almost disqualified Obama from becoming American president simply because of a mentor. They said his mentor has white people. <laughs> white people, they said he has white. Because they could not pin anything on Obama. I like Obama. You know, Obama is not a human being, he's a phenomenon. He's a happening, you understand? So Obama, the other time, because of the power of a vision, a leader must have a vision. He went to the UK and there are red robot places there. What are red robot places? This is where they do sexual indulgence. You know, you just enter a hotel and you just target a woman and you say, let's do this thing, and you, bah, it happens. So they took Obama to such a place. And Obama, when he recognized that this is where he is, he said, guys, take me home. That's one scandal he avoided, which would have costed him the presidency. Because in the first world, they held CCTV everywhere. You know that? Mm -hmm. They were going to extract that clip. And Obama is busy, you know, being carnal with that other woman. And then they say, is this the kind of president America wants? And you have been disqualified. But thank God for the power of focus that Obama was focused. So number four is leadership reproduction. Leaders produce after their own kind. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Number five is where we call the leadership pinnacle, where you become an authority figure. You understand? Like right now, if we were to say Lesotho is in dispute and Nelson Mandela was alive, and he would say, uh uh, Lesotho stop that. It doesn't matter which politician was hearing this in Lesotho, they will stop their nonsense and their Schneider guns. You know that? <laughs> Why? Because Nelson Mandela sits at the very top of leadership, right? And that level is called the pinnacle of leadership. That's why as Coach Ted, what I normally do is I have written a book called Success and Attitude, right? It's a book which has been used by so many organizations and companies. I hope, Madam Director, we may talk about that book because it's what I call the attitude adjuster, right? So what I do when I do my seminars, I always end with these words. Success is an attitude. Let us meet at the top. Where is the top? The top is the pinnacle, right? The top, the top is where you become piliapi, numero uno, the number one. First of the first and best of the best. That's where the top is. So at the top, that's where the master leaders are. Is that understandable? You become a level five leader. You become a level what? Five leader. Do I have any questions so far? Talk to me, baby boys. Talk to me, baby girls. I'm here at your service. OK. If there are no questions, uh, can I go a little bit deeper? Uh, I was laying a foundation. Can I go a little bit deeper? I just want to show you something here, and you're going to help me by answering me what it is, right? Mamma mia, mamma mia, right? The marking of a leader, right? So today, my focus is on the making of a transformational leader, right? 
I heard the VC what he said. He said, let's bring back the glory days. Did you hear that? Let's bring back the glory days. And I am very, very happy uh, that he wants to bring back the glory days. And you know, in life, you must stand for something. Is that understandable? I'm going to show you some leaders. You're going to tell me their names and what they stand for. Is that OK? Yes. As a leader, you must stand for what? Something. Because if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Is that understandable? Mm -hmm. If you don't know where you are going, every road will lead you there. Just like I give you a car with a full tank, and I say go somewhere, I tell you somewhere is anywhere, and anywhere is nowhere. You understand? You'll be just going until you've got an empty tank. <laughs> right. So a leader must stand for what? Something. All right, for something. Here we go. Who is that? Lucy. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr., right? Oh, what do you remember him for? <laughs> yes, what do you remember him for? You are scholars, right? I remember him for black excellence. Yes, sir. He was fighting for black people in America. He was fighting for black people, yes and no. What was Martin Luther King fighting for? Liberation. Equality. Equality, that's right. So you see, equality means the black people are involved and the white people are involved. I have a dream that one day the son of the slave and the son of the former slave owner will come together and will be recognized for the value and the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. He was talking equality. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because you see, we've got to be careful because we can actually love reverse racism. Do you know that? Yes. Yes. Makua <laughs> wana. Ah, wena manitsuwa. So it's very important that we understand that God created us all equal, right? There is no better race, there is no better person. We are all created in the image of God. Created he them, male and female. In his image did he create them, right? And God did not create poor people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to just say? Yes. Oh. What did I just say? God. And you know I'm saying the truth, right? Yes. Mm. And God did not create rich people. <laughs> because you see, if you read my favorite book, it says the rich and the poor, they have this in common. The Lord God created them both. It doesn't say he created them so. It says he created them what? Both. So what did he create? He created people. People are poor because of their decisions. People are, are rich because of their what? It's all about decisions. Look at your neighbor and say you are responsible for where you are. You are responsible for where you are. And you are responsible for what you have. And you are responsible for what you're becoming. And you are responsible for what you are becoming. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we, 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 love, we, we love criticizing other people. We love pulling other people down. But the greatest enemy we have is you. You see, when you say others, you are pointing at them with one finger. Three hands are pointing at you. One is saying God is the witness. <laughs> say, it's them. <laughs> One is saying it's them, right? But three are saying, but it's you. <laughs> you see, no man has the power to pull you down unless you allow them to. Thank you. Nobody has power to pull you down except if you allow them to. Mm. So you see, can I illustrate this point? Uh, come, the Secretary General, come. Mm. Come. 
I, I would just say to you, but you are a bit small. I want the big boy. So <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want us to be on a collision course. What I'm going to do, I'm going to allow him to walk from that end, and I'm going to meet him halfway through, and I'm going to do a shoulder charge on him. Just want to illustrate a principle, right? Come on. <laughs> 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 what happened? He just swerved. I flinched. What did you do about it? Nothing. So in life, you are responsible for what you do. You are not responsible for what others do to you. But you are certainly responsible for how you respond. You've got a choice for people to put you down or to lift you up. The choice is entirely yours. Thank God for that. You, you see, because he could have chosen to say, oh, why, why have you said that? That's what I was looking for. Isn't that right? So by ignoring me, he made me look stupid. That's why I believe that success is 90% attitude and 10% aptitude. So which means even without aptitude, you can still succeed. Do you see that? you can still succeed with having a good attitude. You see, they say attitude is all you have and it's what you carry everywhere you go. You understand? A bad attitude is like a flat tire on a car. It will not get you anywhere until you decide to change it. Somebody shout, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, you guys. That was Martin Luther King, right? Mm -hmm. Let us go to the next guy. Mamma mia, mamma mia. So, let's go to next, the next guy. Who is this? Nelson. What do you know him for? I have fought from way to Freedom fighter, right? Oh, you know what to do is for I like that. If you read this book, a long walk to freedom. Yeah, I like it when he says after conquering a lot of obstacles, and uh, he realized that uh, when he thought he was on top of the mountain, there were many more mountains Mountain to, climb. to climb. And that's the story of leadership. Do you know that? Definitely. Leadership, you never finish. <laughs> you, you, you die leading. The leaders, they never stop leading. They just redirect where they lead from. Once a pirate, always a pirate. <laughs> right. So that's Mandela there for you. And do you know that there is something we don't talk about Nelson Mandela? Nelson Mandela did not know how to manage a woman. Mm, yes. 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 But does it matter? It doesn't. Yes. It does. It does. No, it doesn't matter. Thank because it's too great without a woman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tango. <laughs> so the, here is the principle. Here is the principle. Here is the principle. You've got to hear this, right? Mm -hmm. You see, the law of focus says this. Whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you neglect dies. Oh, yeah. You see, when I was doing science, I was told that the sun is the hottest element on the planet of the Earth. And you know, you can melt if you get towards the sun, right? But here is what I discovered. When the sun is at its hottest and you put a piece of paper in the atmosphere, the piece of paper will take 10 years before it burns. Mm. But when you look at the what you call the parabolic mirror and you put a similar piece of paper underneath it, after 10 seconds, the paper burns from a less and a low level of power. What is the difference? It's focus. The rays of the parabolic mirror are focused on the pepper, and therefore the pepper will catch the fire and it will burn. Do you understand? So here is the secret in life. 
So many of you as leaders, there are things you don't like about yourselves and you keep focusing on those things. Stop that nonsense and start, start focusing on what you would like to see. Do you hear me? What you keep looking at, you are exactly becoming that. Thank you very much. So I just used the Mandela illustration so that you could see. He never really focused on these relationships with women much. He kept focusing on his role as a statesman. And man, he did it to perfection. In Africa, living power. You know, somebody, was it you who was talking about the age limits uh, being changed in politics yesterday? And uh, is he right? Yes. It's you. All right. You, you know, isn't it it's interesting? The politicians, they vote and they say we all should retire at 60 or 65. But at eight years, they want to be prime minister. <laughs> isn't that interesting? All right, we're moving on. The leadership that's Oh, I missed, I missed one. Do you know the story of Mahatma Gandhi, you guys? I like you to know the story of Mahatma Gandhi because you are student union leaders, right? Or student representatives. You, you see, the story of Mahatma Gandhi is one of the most inspirational stories of leadership which you ever learn. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, what made him a leader is a very simple incident. His father was a poor man and they were raised in a very poor family. There were so many, as is typical with Asian families. And one day he decided to steal some money and he stole the money, which was the last family money, and he bought some cigars and he smoked the cigars. Now, when the father came back from work, he needed to use that money for something very important in the home and he called the children, did you take this money? I didn't. Did you take this money? I didn't. Did you take this money? I didn't. Then he knew by instinct that Mahatma had stolen that money, although he was not a thief. So he said, uh, my father looked at me with his intense eyes, which were so deep. They were so deep with compassion. And when he looked at me, he said, son, did you take that money? Mahatma Gandhi said, I said, no, I didn't. He said, my father looked at me, and as he looked at me, he started crying. He said, as he started crying, I also started crying. And I broke down, and I said, Dad, I am sorry. That is the day Mahatma Gandhi became a leader. And that's when he realized that it's not about force. Because this one, I didn't beat him. He didn't beat him. He just looked at him and said, I'm so disappointed. Why? Why are you refusing what you did? And as the father cried, the son started crying. So that's why he is the only man in the history of the world to go to a war, as far as I'm concerned, that is. And he never actually went to a real war. He mobilized India. And he said, we are marching for our independence. No gunshot was fired. No stone was thrown. You understand? The power, when you mobilize your numbers, you guys, you have the real power. You understand? Your power is not in wanton destruction of property. Your power is not in military senseless violence. But your power is in standing steadfastly as the rock of Gibraltar and say we are not moving an inch until this matter is dealt with. When you are as assertive as that, leadership will not know what to do with you. And even the community will sympathize with you. You understand? But the moment you begin to belittle yourselves to levels of people who are not literate and do some funny things, you know, you are taking away your power. Your real power is in standing and remaining standing and being assertive even in the face of an onslaught. Mr. President, do you hear me, sir? That's where your power is. That's where your power is. Sir. That's why they say the pen is mightier than the sword. Because you see, when you use it like that, 
the VC and his team will say, come guys, let's talk. How do we resolve this impasse? You know, you come every day, you don't insult nobody. You just stand your position. If you want something done, you have it on the placard. You're not insulting anybody, you get the point? The, the press, you call them, you mobilize them, you know? You, you put them to order because you've got to do that. That is leadership at this level, right? And you show them, say, okay, this is it. They cannot say you insulted some authorities because you did it. <laughs> but you are standing for your constituency because you also have a mandate, isn't that right? To represent the needs of these, your people. And when you do that, I tell you, you cause a system shift. The system will never become the same again. There is, ladies and gentlemen, always another way of getting things done. Now, who will be that? You see, Robert Mkabe is one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known, but he became a victim of the economic power of the Western society. I took a long time to study and to understand him. Robert Mugabe is one of the most selfless politicians you would ever come across. Selfless. His unbecoming or undoing became his obsession with power. He became so power drunk to the point that everything was about power. But he is a man who really and truly loved the people. That's why he's true, be kind to him. Because he is the man who led the only African country to take back its land from the colonialists. You, you know, and why was he persecuted? Because it is a bad precedent to the rest of the Western world. Do you understand? Can you imagine if South Africa would take its land? Can you imagine if Zambia would take its land? Can you imagine if every African country would say, no, this is our land? Listen, I say this with all due respect. England belongs to the English. England has ever sued to an abyss. It's a fact. No emotional attachment to this, no sentiment, but saying it the way it is. So you see, when you want to see the importance of land, even when God wants to bless people, God doesn't give money. Did you know that? I'm messing up with your religion right there. God, when he wants to bless people, he doesn't give people money. He gives them real estate. That's the, that's the only inheritance God will give you. You know why? Because the land produces everything. <laughs> So Mugabe's cause is that he decided to claim what was rightfully for his people. And when he did that, the whole system of colonialism came back. And he started demonizing him. You know, do you know that you believe what you hear about politicians on radio? But who owns the radio? And so the person who owns the radio controls what you hear. I liked what the VC said about Ted Turner, the CNN founder, right? That he said, okay, let us not censor news. Let people go and fight. I like that part. Because that's true news. Do you understand? Mm. So Robert Mugabe, like him or not, he will forever be a hero. He is not perfect, but who is perfect? Show me a leader who is perfect. I will tell you their weakness. <laughs> yes, show me one who is perfect. I will shock you. All right. So. Who, who is that leader? Piliapi. <laughs> right. So, Mope Mushoshe was a master leader and a master strategist. 
We have read so many stories of how Mushaka tried to attack him, how Mums Zirikazi tried to attack him, and he outmaneuvered them in his Mount Tabawisi, right? Until they were tired and he said, you are hungry, go home. Ingan Dikomo, Ritsama Roja. And they never came back. That's leadership. He solved a security problem, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, because instead of fighting Ashaka Zul every month or every weekend, he just said, Ingan Samaya Roja, I'm going to like it. That's what leaders do, you guys, come on. And he built a nation. Because the Sutu, once upon a time, you were not a nation. You were a collective, a collective of tribal clans, right? Mm -hmm. This, that, this, that. And this wise man came along and he said, I will make these people into one thing. I will make them a nation. This is why we say, right? He's the father of Basutu. Why? Because his grandfather made Lesotho Lesotho. Isn't that right? Yeah. Mm. So you, you got to see what dimension did this man bring to leadership. So he brought stability. Do you know there is no prosperity without stability? It's because there is stability. <laughs> if we bring 98, how am I wrong? You understand? So it's very, very important that we understand what a leader brought. I'm building my case. Stay with me. Don't go away, right? I'm building my case. Uh, what did this leader bring? OK, another leader. Thomas Bandara. Ah. Captain, my captain. Ah. There is something that is very interesting. Thomas Sankara and Martin Luther King, they died at the same age. Did you ever notice that? Born in 1949, Thomas Sankara was murdered in 1987. They were in their 30s, right? Yes. Martin Luther King died at 38, 39, Thomas Sankara 37, 38, thereabout. Uh, what do you remember Thomas Sankara for? Liberation. Liberation, right? He liberated which country? No, the Burkina, Burkina Faso. Right, and he was killed by his best friend. That should tell you something about leadership. Yeah. Judas, Judas Iscariot was yeah. Jesus' cousin. Cousin. <laughs> yes. You should know the names of the Bible. You understand? Judas and Jesus, they were from the tribe of Judah. You understand? Judah has the surname and the lineage of Jesus. So these guys were cousins. You understand? And he is the guy who sold Jesus out. In heaven, the devil was the covering cherub. 